Good evening and welcome to our 15th Healing of the Body class. Well, we have had a pretty miraculous journey, I would say, so far. And we haven't finished yet, but in our part one, we've understood more clearly than ever, I think, I hope, that consciousness is body. And in our part two, of which this is the last class, we have had very clear instruction about dispelling the false material sense or the material sense, which is the false sense. And so let's make sure that tonight we are very, very clear about where our consciousness wants to be in order to understand and move forward now into the actual living of the spiritual self, the infinity of self, the freedom of self. Let's make sure we truly understand that because consciousness is the only substance, the only beingness, the only presence, the only form of experience, the only awareness, the only place, the only condition, the only, only, period. Everything of experience is actually consciousness, not the way it appears, but actually consciousness. And therefore, if we wish to know the truth, and of course we do, about anything, anywhere, infinitely and eternally, we have to become interested in and we have to seek the truth of consciousness, not the truth of the thing or the body or the amount or the condition or the place or the activity. But because all is consciousness, we need to seek the truth of consciousness. Now, we've heard this in many ways. Another way we've heard it is to seek God first. Jesus says, do not do not seek the things of life and the good of life in the way that life can be described by the mind, but seek the kingdom of God first. And then all these things will be added unto you. And we've heard throughout the Miracle Self classes that when it is stated that all these good things will be added unto you, this means will be added unto your awareness. Your awareness, your consciousness will become truthful, will become illumined and therefore be the good of experience. But you see, seek the kingdom of God first is the same as saying seek consciousness, not seek the good of or the harmony of or God in the way the mind is observing God, observing God, infinity consciousness, omnipresence, through its five senses and three dimensions. Therefore, everything of God appears to be of one or more of the five senses and three dimensional. Don't seek God there in the way that God appears to be and the way that it is appearing to be, everything is appearing to be something of its own self, his, her, or its own self. No, forget the appearance and seek the truth of that which is appearing, and that is consciousness. And so we seek consciousness. What is the truth of consciousness? This is the first thing we must realize. Second thing we must then get on with, be busy with, is the understanding of consciousness as being infinity, as being omnipresence, as being 
incorporeal, as being eternal, as being non-local, as being formless, shapeless, amountless, weightless, timeless, spaceless, nameableless. And because God is the only and besides God there is none else, and we can use all the synonyms, because consciousness is the only and besides consciousness there is none else, or we can say because omnipresence is the only and therefore besides omnipresence there is none else, eternity, infinity, incorporeality is the only and besides that there is none else. Because of this truth, we understand that infinity, God, consciousness, omnipresence, eternity, incorporeality, is incapable of being anything but itself. And that means the fullness of itself. We understand that. We understand that the fullness of truth, the fullness of infinity, the fullness of God or consciousness, or omnipresence, eternity, is fully existent at every place of itself simultaneously. And so the place we're speaking of is always, because consciousness is the only, it is a place of consciousness, or we can use the synonym awareness. Whatever we are being aware of, whatever place, whatever moment, whatever him or her, or aspect or organ or function of him or her, or whatever amount or activity or condition we are being aware of actually is the whole of incorporeality, the whole of God, the whole of omnipresence and eternity, fully present as the whole of itself, as that very point of or moment of or place of awareness. Because only the whole is. We cannot escape it. Wherever we are observing, whatever we are being, wherever we are, and whether we're observing what we say or the mind says is a tiny little speck of something or other, a cell or an atom even, or a grain of sand or a blade of grass or a little puff of wind or whatever it may be, or It's what the mind says is gargantuan. It's a mountain. It's an ocean. It is the universe. It is space itself. Whatever the mind says actually doesn't make any difference. What it is observing and actually what it is being always is the whole of the infinite fully present at that very point point of or moment of or observance of awareness. Infinity can't change to become local or finite or temporal. Infinity cannot be shaped or formed or created as an amount or somehow divided into an amount existing somewhere and somehow in time and space. It cannot be objectified. The infinite is the infinitude itself, and the infinitude can only be the fullness of itself, which is always the infinitude. Eternity can only be itself. You can't create a temporal amount of or moment of eternity. How would that occur? Eternity has only itself to offer. So even though we may temporarily observe some point of awareness of eternity and misperceive that point or that temporal moment as a temporal objectified slice of eternity called a year or a minute or a month or whatever it may be, we are wrong. Eternity has only itself to offer because there is nothing else to offer. You can't create something different from something that can only be itself. It's impossible. Do you catch that? It's utterly impossible. And just to use a material example, if we're a potter and we're using clay 
and we're making vases and bowls and dishes and plates, then that clay cannot become plastic, cannot become metal, cannot become wood, cannot become ice. We can't shape anything other than clay itself because that's the only substance that we're using and therefore it can only offer itself as that which we are experiencing. That's a terrible material example. But you understand, if eternity is the only substance, the only presence, the only being, the only consciousness, and there literally is nothing but eternity, how could we possibly create a temporal minute out of that which is only eternal? How could we possibly create a lifetime of 10 or 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120 years out of that which is only eternal and incapable of being anything but eternal. In the same way, how can we possibly create a finite or local form or amount of anything at all, objectified anything or experienced anything at all, from that which is omnipresence, incapable of being anything but itself. Omnipresence only has omnipresence to offer. There is nothing else other than omnipresence, which is the entirety of the infinite, fully present at each point of awareness of itself simultaneously. It's utterly impossible to objectify it, finitize it, make a temporal object out of it. Utterly impossible. What we can do is have an awareness that seems to be this moment of awareness. And let me tell you, even that is still quite a lowly consciousness of awareness or lowly consciousness. Because as we rise into truthful God awareness, then we're always aware. I shouldn't say always, but we are largely aware of the wholeness being the only presence, the only awareness. We literally experience the living infinity being the being we are which is all inclusive the whole of consciousness being the being we are being the body we are and so nothing even though if we were to freeze it as a moment or an object of experience we could say well there's a finite object or him or her finite body a um, an objectified body or an amount of something or other, dollars or the weight of a body or the size of a building or whatever it might be. But when we're living truth, which means that truth is living us, infinity is living us, infinity is the living awareness we are being, then even though the mind is making of infinity a three-dimensional picture or a three-dimensional experience, and even though we're sensing that three-dimensional experience with one or more of five senses doesn't make any difference. We are the living awareness that actually the only presence is infinity, the whole of God, and there it is, period. There's nothing more for us to do other than witness the experience of God blossoming everywhere as our experience. Anyway, I'm sure we'll hear more about that in our part three. But right now, we understand that omnipresence is incapable of being anything but itself. It has nothing, therefore, to offer but itself, the whole of omnipresence as any point and every point of awareness. And therefore, there's nothing but omnipresence. We can't make finiteness. We cannot objectify. We cannot create a temporal moment of reality from that which is actually omnipresence and eternal life existent. We only have and can only therefore experience omnipresence, life eternal, life infinite, experience infinite, and everything in and of experience, that of infinity, omnipresence, eternity. And so in this way we are seeking consciousness. We're seeking God. We're seeking the kingdom of truthful awareness, the kingdom of God. And in that way, we are understanding ourselves and our experience, our body and our world, our universe and everything in and of it. Because 
everything in and of us, everything in and of our experience, inclusive of our body, inclusive of everything, is actually, despite appearance, consciousness. Therefore, as we understand consciousness to a higher degree, we understand ourselves to a higher degree, and that higher degree reveals itself because consciousness is experience. All right. That's rattled through a little bit, but I think we've had so many beautifully clear classes about it that if we need a bit more of an understanding or a slower pace, then we can go back to those classes. We also understand that because God is and everything of experience of its own self is nothing, it's nothing but imagery without substance, without law to sustain it or principle to sustain it, without any truth to sustain it whatsoever. And that's why it's temporal. That's why it varies. That's why it lets us down both the good and the bad, the pairs of opposites, which, as we've heard loud and clear, are nothing to do with God whatsoever, but everything to do with the mind alone. This is why they do not last. They have no law sustaining them. They're simply images. They're puffs of smoke, puffs of imagery, that's all. Always temporal. The good is no more reliable than the bad, no more invariable than the bad. Both good and bad are variable, unreliable, temporal. And the reason is they have no law or substance of truth behind them or as them. And so because this is true, because God is the only actual substance, presence, law, principle, Oneness is, infinity is, omnipresence is, and that's what consciousness is, and therefore everything of consciousness actually, again, despite appearance and despite experience, is God. All we have to do is dispel the material sense in order to witness God standing right there as everything of our experience. God is already. You can look out anywhere into your or as your experience, whether that be into your thoughts or into your sense of body or into your sense of world or any detail of it. And you can realize right now that because God is, you are actually witnessing, despite all appearance and all experience, God. We've heard this in the last few classes. Actually, only God is. Only the incorporeal is and we are having because we are low down that scale of awareness or we have been we're not now so much and we're going to continue to rise but because material consciousness or human consciousness is low down that scale of awareness we've said it's about 10 percent i have no idea where it is but it's low down somewhere by definition it's believing its own sense of materiality and humanity and physicality mentality the only thing that has to be achieved is the dispelling of that false sense. The only thing we're witnessing actually is the incorporeal, and yet we are having a corporeal sense of it. And therefore that sense, because consciousness is experience, is our experience. Whatever we're sensing as truthful is our experience because we believe it we attach it we believe that that which we are experiencing is something of its own self and so we better get on with maintaining it looking after it caring for it prospering it giving it more life or sustained life somehow trying to bring love to it and so on we've heard all this the only thing we're actually witnessing is omnipresence even though what we're observing seems to be local presence, finite presence, temporal presence, objectified presence, formed, shaped, living somehow or existing somehow in time and space. But actually, despite that appearance, we now know that we are observing omnipresence, 
We're simply observing it down the scale of conscious awareness, so it looks to be objectified and anything but omnipresence. But actually, despite that appearance, what we're actually observing is omnipresence because there is nothing else. So here and now, omnipresence is. Here and now, incorporeality is. We've heard that the only power, omnipotence, is the power we're witnessing, even though through the mind and down that scale of awareness, that one power appears to be of both good and bad. So there appears to be the power of life and happiness and love and good quality, kindness, generosity, sincerity, givingness, and... At the same time, often at the very same table or in the very same household or in the very same body, there appears to be another aspect or facet of power that is negative, that is destructive, argumentative. A lack of quality, a lack of love, a lack of kindness and sincerity, greed, hate, argument, war. But even though... We are experiencing these pairs of opposites virtually any place we decide to look. Actually, what we're witnessing is the very one power itself, omnipotence, because there is no other power to offer our experience, our truthful experience. Experience itself, capital E, let's say. We have learned that there's only one intelligence, omniscience, And even though, as we come down the scale and we look at omniscience through the mind and believe what we're witnessing, there it is, there we have suddenly in our experience both good and bad intelligence, and without going through it all again, we can realize even whilst we're witnessing that which appears to be the pairs of opposites of intelligence, what we're actually witnessing is only omniscience again because only omniscience is there's nothing else to offer only omniscience is and so we have gone through all of this and it is this very way of realizing consciously realizing and forever lifting our awareness above that which seems to be up that scale into that which actually is or into the living awareness of that which actually is that we are dispelling the material consciousness, and by the degree that we find ourselves or are able to lift ourselves into a living awareness of only God is, only incorporeality is, only omniscience is, only omnipotence is, only omnipresence is, only eternity is, that we witness it as our experience. Now this brings us to another point. Let's just step back one step, and that is let's make sure that we all understand that the very lifting of our awareness towards God awareness, pure God awareness, as our all-inclusive experience, is the dispelling of the material consciousness. There's our goal, and by the degree that we do dispel that material consciousness, there is that degree fully evident as our experience or let's say gradually evident as our experience evermore as these material senses are ever more dispelled from our consciousness all right so that's clear i think that is the way of dispelling the material sense and our goal is to get to the place where we are at least living and feeling it living us the spiritual awareness, the spiritual consciousness, the God consciousness, the consciousness of infinity, omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience, incorporeality, eternity, more than 50% of each hour. In other words, the most of us has to be, and this is what we're reaching for, the living awareness of God as the only truth, the only presence, the only being, the only body, the only thing, the only amount, the only love, and so on, the only place condition, the only world, the only universe. Now, do you see that when we are living 51% of each hour or each minute, 55, 60%, 65, 80%, 85%, 
in or as the living awareness of God as or infinity as or omnipresence as incorporeality as eternity as the very being we are and the very world we're living in then do you see how life is miraculous life is suddenly effortless miracles are witnessed but the miracle is the lifting of consciousness because God's already there There's no miracle that God has witnessed. God's been standing around waiting for our awareness of it for eternity. So there's really no miracle, even though it seems it, in spotting God here, there and everywhere, in watching the transformation of a material-sensed body or a material-sensed experience of life somehow transforming to God, to harmony, to truth, to peace, to abundance, to love to freedom to the infinite resource of whatever it is we need resources of there's no miracle in that really what the real miracle is is that when we lift consciousness away from the false material sense into truthful sense there it is all over our land there is the body of truth there is the activity of truth there is the union of truthful being the union of truthful activity the abundance of truthful amount omnipresence as all amount and so on the safety the security the home the happiness the beautiful loving relationships and expression of those loving relationships and the purpose the work that can be done the truth that can pour forth as loving and truthful relationship it's it's a miracle but the miracle is the lifting to that consciousness of god already is You catch that? All right, and this brings us to the next point, which is God is never going to do anything for you. I listened to a talk the other day that we went to, and the speaker, lovely speaker, lovely person, but completely metaphysical, was speaking of an experience in her life where she thought or she assumed or she stated is a better description, the intervention of God. Some beautiful thing happened, and she understood this to be the intervention of God. No, God doesn't intervene. How can omnipresence intervene with itself? Omnipresence is, and omnipresence is the only is, and it's already is. So there's nothing to intervene in. It's already there before anything was spotted as needing to be intervened with. God already is. The health of your body, the full health, the eternity, the freedom, the vitality and the purpose of your body already is. If And mine already is. And if we're not aware of it, and therefore because we're low down in awareness, we are experiencing that lower degree of awareness as our body, and that's going to result in some old age or some tiredness or some illness or injury or even disease then we can't expect to sit and pray and have God intervene and give us a miraculous healing. This we have to be very, very careful about. Consciousness is experience and it's the only experience, period. There's no other experience available. Whatever we're living as consciousness, which means as our degree, our belief, our substance of awareness, our degree or level of awareness of truth is our experience and it's the only experience ever available to us now this may be at first something hard to take and then when we think about it for a minute it's the most wondrous thing it means that you and i are in 100 percent control of our ability to lift up into truth and experience it here and now truth already is fully here for and as your totality of experience and mine. And all we have to do is realize that and then lift into its awareness, or as we heard in IAT the other day, lift into that realm of awareness, the truthful realm of awareness, which is the lifting into the truth that only God is and all the synonyms, lift right up into that living awareness and then as we start actually believing, living, 
what's a better word? As we start having that realm of truth as our one reality, there we go, then it is that we witness it as that very realm of reality. And then when we want more good, more freedom, more infinity evident as our experience, more eternity, more love, more of the infinite resources, more of the treasures of heaven or the mansions of heaven, then again we lift further. And this is an infinite unfolding of individual awareness. We carry on forever lifting further and further into the infinity of awareness and each time we do more of paradise is evident as our very world, our very body and world and everything in and of it, our very universe and then beyond the universe, our very infinity, our very heaven and everything in and of it. So we must realize now as we finally dispel any remaining material sense or material misperception or misunderstanding that God's never going to do anything for us. God's already done everything for us because God is us, incapable of being anything less than itself. But our awareness is low at the moment. It's blossoming at the moment. And therefore, because our low awareness is that which we have believed as reality, we have to live that reality. But please let me assure you that no matter what your experience is today, You have the ability to rise today into a higher degree of God awareness, which is God as the only reality, which is infinity as the only reality in presence, omnipresence as the only reality in presence, incorporeality as the only reality in presence, omniscience, omnipotence as the only reality in presence, eternity as the only reality in presence, And besides that, there is nothing capable of being anything but itself. Therefore, it has nothing to offer but itself. And as we rise into a greater degree of that truth of awareness, then it is that we witness it as our everything everywhere. And my friends, I can assure you that this is available to you here and now. And all it takes is the consistent lifting into and higher into God awareness. God does not give or withhold. God is and God fully is. But God is incorporeal. The only being, the only thing, the only experience actually is incorporeal and we are having a corporeal sense of the incorporeal and hence our material sensed experience but it isn't real the only reality is the incorporeal and so it is by the degree that we are the living consciousness of incorporeality as the only reality that we start witnessing it, start witnessing the freedoms, the infinity, the eternal life and good and love of the incorporeal. Do you catch that? So if we understand that it's the rising up to more than half of our consistent 24-hour experience, and I like to think of that as every minute, every moment, let me mostly be consciously aware of the incorporeal as the only presence, It's this more than half that really is the tipping point of our spiritual living. The tipping point of the dispelling of sufficient material consciousness to witness miracle after miracle. To witness the miracle of so-called healing, the miracle of so-called abundance and harmony and love and life throughout experience. And I can tell you over the years of the miracle self this is the one thing I watch students failing to do and frankly well it is a laziness now I want to qualify that it's not a purposeful laziness but it is a laziness of effort to consistently rise into or insist on a truthful 
conscious awareness rather than being taken over by the untruthful material awareness that results in the students or devotees' failure to rise into truth and therefore witness truth here and now, today, this week, this month. Anyone can do it and can do it quickly. Anyone can do it in 30 days. This is why the 30-day discipline is so beautiful for those who apply the discipline of consciously realizing the truth as their very conscious activity moment by moment rather than thinking that just a few times a day or 5 or 10 or 15 minutes per hour is sufficient to do it and then sit around waiting for the miracle of it to occur for them. As if there's a power outside which we've now made pleased with our effort, our 10 minutes an hour or 5 or 15 minutes an hour, and therefore now surely that power outside of us or greater than us is going to come along and intervene and show us some good or heal us of whatever it is we need freedom from. But no, you see, the whole power of your experience is within you. The whole power of it. You are the infinite. As the poet says, find a way to release the imprisoned splendor. Find a way to release the imprisoned awareness. Find a way to release the imprisoned power, the imprisoned presence, the imprisoned life, the imprisoned eternity, the imprisoned abundance, the imprisoned omniscience. Whatever synonym we wish to use, find a way to release it. And that way, because all is consciousness, is by the use of consciousness, and that use of consciousness has to be the using of consciousness to realize truth. To realize incorporeality as the only presence, rather than being taken in by corporeality as seeming presence, seeming reality. The only reality is incorporeality. The only reality is omnipresence, incapable of being corporeal or objectified presence, temporal presence, finite presence, shaped presence, local presence. The only reality is consciousness itself, never localized, never personal, never objectified, never nameable. You see, so... As we insist, and this is what I'm urging you to do as this last class of part two, I'm urging you to believe sufficiently, and there's the reason, by the way, and you've heard me say it before, that I think we are lazy. We don't actually believe that the very presence of I is the presence of God, the presence of infinity. It really is. You, this very moment are the full embodiment of God, the full embodiment of heaven, the full embodiment of omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence, the full embodiment of infinity, all omnipresence. However, because it's not consciously realized, it is imprisoned, as the poet calls it. Therefore, find a way of releasing that imprisoned truth, and that way is to know the truth, lift consciousness into truth, and that lifting of consciousness into truth is the opening of consciousness which then allows truth to be fully evident everywhere about. So it's this lack of belief that actually, literally, here and now, God is, and that is you, your consciousness. The only consciousness is God, and therefore because you have consciousness and I do, that consciousness is God again. God cannot divide itself. God hasn't portioned off a bit of consciousness and called it you and another bit and called it me and now we're left on our own, separate from the main consciousness that is God, having to find our way back into God to discover our truth. It's all nonsense, do you see? Omnipresence is omnipresence and you are that. If you're a presence, you're omnipresence because there isn't any other presence. If you have consciousness and you do, then you are the consciousness because there isn't any other. If you have life, you have the life incapable of being anything else but eternal life and good life, joyous life, free life, because life is that and is incapable of being anything less or different or temporal and doesn't therefore have anything else to offer life, offer experience. You are life eternal because there isn't any other type of life. There isn't any option. You can't have a bit of life 
you are the whole of life because there isn't any other type or presence or experience of life. You are the whole of presence, the whole of infinity, the whole of incorporeality, the whole of God. If you're searching for God outside of yourself, you're going to search forever until that moment you realize that God is the very consciousness that you are. Therefore, what has been called within you, therefore, your only search is the search to be consciously aware of God, which means consciously being God. If only we could all hear that, we'd all be free by the morning. Literally, because as we are being God consciousness, then God consciousness is evident everywhere about, because consciousness is experience. We are being the very image and likeness of whatever level we are consciously aware of, consciously being as our moment-by-moment consciousness. Therefore, as I be God consciousness at every step and every breath, then that is what I'm going to witness. Because my consciousness isn't accepting anything but God as that which I'm observing. You catch this? As I can look anywhere into my experience, my world or my body or my relationship, my home, my family, my infinity, my universe, and recognize that what I'm observing is only God, then my consciousness is open and free to witness the image and likeness of God as the imagery of my mind. The five senses and the three dimensions suddenly become of God because the image and likeness of God is being realized, is being lived as my consciousness. I am aware only of God, of omnipresence, of infinity, of incorporeality. When I see my corporeal imaged experience, I'm not fooled. I can look at it and say, you may look corporeal, but that's just a sense. You're actually incorporeal. Isn't that wonderful? You're actually not finite. You're actually not lacking in anything at all. You are the very presence of infinity itself. Isn't that wonderful? You can't fool me. If you look to be lacking in something, in health or in supply or in love or in peace or in safety or in security or in opportunity or in freedom or in happiness... You can't fool me. That's just the way you look. But what you are, whatever you are, is God. Omnipresence, infinity, incorporeality, omniscience. If you look to be unintelligent in some way, if you look to be having an argument with me or with someone else or with something else or in disagreement or unhappy or a lack of love, a lack of generosity, a lack of peace, a lack of harmony, a lack of health, a lack of happiness, then you can't fool me because actually I know what you are. You're just an image and what you actually are is omniscience itself, divine intelligence itself fully embodied, as divine intelligence always is. Omnipresence is what embodiment is. And just because my mind is objectifying omnipresence, it isn't real. It hasn't made a real object out of it. Therefore, separating something, separating a bit of omnipresence and making it local presence. No. Omnipresence has only itself to offer. It is incapable of ever being anything but the wholeness of itself. Therefore, I'm always witnessing omnipresence. And again, we've heard the only thing that ever presents itself to you is God. Therefore, the only thing that ever presents itself to me is omnipresence. It may look like one dollar and I may need a thousand. It may look like a thousand dollars and I need ten thousand. It may look like ten thousand dollars and I need a hundred thousand or a million or whatever I might need. But I can't be fooled. What's really there is neither the one or the thousand or the ten or the ten thousand or the hundred thousand or the million or whatever it is. What's really there is omnipresence infinity and nothing less because anything different is incapable of being present. Omnipresence doesn't have any capability to be local presence or finite or lacking presence. It is the whole of itself and that is eternally the only presence there is. If I see a lack of health, I'm not fooled by that because I know that what I'm seeing is omniscience. And it's unintelligent to be unhealthy or ill or diseased or injured or immobile. It's unintelligent to be anything but the freedom of infinity itself, the freedom of God itself. Therefore, if I'm witnessing anything that seems to be a lack of health or a lack of mobility or a lack of freedom, I'm not fooled because I know that what I'm actually observing is omniscience itself. 
Therefore, I have to simply rise up into the awareness instead of corporeal, incorporeal. And there I find omniscience fully evident. If I try and find omniscience in corporeality, I'm never going to succeed. But the moment I've lifted up into the incorporeal awareness as the only presence, there I find omniscience. There I find omnipresence. There I find infinity. There I find omnipotence. There I find eternity. So, we are going to, from class 16 onwards, get into the adventure of living the truth. We are going to assume that the material sense has mostly been dispelled. Meaning that more than 50% of every minute of us is the living awareness of incorporeality as the only presence, the only life, the only body. Consciousness as the only body. Not this finite, local or personal or selfish sense of self, but consciousness itself, infinity itself, omnipresence itself as the only I, the only body. I does not have different departments in it. Consciousness does not have different departments, one called a physical local body and another called a loving relationship, a him or her, or another called a family, another called a home that we're all living in, another called a neighbourhood that more of us are living in, another called a town, a city, a state, a country, a continent, a world, a universe. No, consciousness has only itself everywhere present. It's only the mind that's divided and suddenly named an infinite variety of names, all different from each other, all requiring different effort, different maintenance, different understanding, different skills. It's a mess. But as we rise into the consciousness, the living awareness that consciousness is the only, and consciousness is infinite, and consciousness is I, then the totality of I is the oneness of consciousness. Now, right there, our entire life has been simplified. Our entire life has really lost all the requirement for effort and struggle and labor because consciousness is one. All we have to do is know that oneness. It doesn't matter that as I peer at that oneness through the five senses and the three dimensions of the mind, suddenly that oneness appears to be an infinite variety or multitude of different things and different bodies and characters and qualities and amounts and so on and so on. It doesn't matter. Actually, what we've now lifted into, and that lifting into is dispelling that false material sense as being something of its own self, is the consciousness of oneness being all. Consciousness being all, infinity being all, omnipresence being all. And so now all we're dealing with is the awareness of that oneness being all. It's a joy, it's an adventure that as we peer at oneness through the mind, we have an infinite variety of experiences of oneness. It's a miracle, it's incredible. And the minute we're free of the belief of the material sense, the belief that everything we're experiencing is something of its own self or his or her own self, and we're the living awareness that actually all that we are experiencing is the fullness of God, then indeed life here and now in this world, but not of it, becomes a joyous adventure, a freedom, a purpose, a givingness, a serving that we're able to literally give or be here and now. There's no waiting for your heavenly experience. There's no waiting for your freedom. There's no waiting for any resource or waiting for any ability or opportunity to serve. My golly, the opportunity to serve once we've risen up into truth, believe me, comes from every which way. Because you can't hide your light under a bushel, as Jesus has told us. Once you are the light of consciousness, believe me, the world starts coming to you ever more. Much is expected of you, it is told of us in Scripture. 
But remember, it's not expected of a personal sense of you or a local sense or a finite sense of you. It is expected of the truth of you and therefore as it is met by the truth of you, welcomed and embraced by the truth of you, then that which comes to us quickly reveals itself as truth also. But the joy of it, the joy of the freedom of the living of truth is indescribable. The joy of being free of the material sense or material belief is indescribable. The miracles that are witnessed each and every day are indescribable. And so I really want all of us to be certain what the dispelling of the material sense is, how to achieve it, and I think we've surely by now given such clarity about how to achieve it that we don't need any more. We just need to get on with it. And I also want to somehow have you know, please know that God, truth, consciousness as you is the one reality. And that one reality is you here and now. And all you have to do is rise into its awareness. Rise into the realm of of truthful consciousness, truthful awareness. And realize that that truthful awareness then evidences itself everywhere about because truthful awareness, again, can't be contained. It's not happening in here somewhere in a local being, which then has to be witnessed somehow out there. It has to be brought out to life somehow. No, Awareness is infinite. Again, only consciousness is, and consciousness is omnipresent and infinite and cannot be anything but itself. And so as you are the living awareness of truth, then that living awareness of truth is the infinity, is the omnipresence of the entirety of your experience. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to apply it in the way that the material sense thinks it has to apply truth somehow taking truth from here and applying it over there and then waiting for it to be evident. No, your truthful awareness is your truthful experience. So please do believe that God is real. Please do believe that consciousness is what you are and consciousness is what everything everywhere is. All the oneness, all the one activity, the one substance, the one consciousness, the one place, the one omnipresence, And all you have to do is get busy with knowing the truth as it has been described so clearly through these classes. And then you will witness that truth everywhere about. The one thing to make sure you're not doing is containing truth and thinking that the truth you are aware of is somehow happening only inside your head, inside this local sense of consciousness. And then you have to apply it to a world that's separate and apart from you. There's nothing separate and apart from you. You are the entirety and the self-inclusiveness of your experience. All is one, all is omnipresence. And as you know the truth, you'll see it over there blossoming. You'll see it over there as a healing body. You'll see it over there as a blossoming harmony. You'll see it over there as love coming together, as peace and safety, security, happy, happiness, union between beings. You'll see it everywhere. It's just amazing. Everywhere you look, there it is. Everywhere you step, there it is in the most unexpected way. You see, you're not expecting it anywhere corporeally. What you're doing is remaining in the awareness of incorporeality. It's like being in the cinema and not really being engaged with, not being affected by, not believing as anything real, that imagery that you're witnessing on the screen. It's very much like that. We walk around this world, but we're not of it. We operate in this world, but we are not of it. We interact, we exchange, we trade, we commune, but we're not of it. We're in it, but not of it. And that not of it is the very living awareness of truth as we're walking around in our world, in our consciousness, and yet being busy with only one thing, making the effort in only one way, and that is the maintaining of truthful awareness. And then it is that quite unexpectedly we meet up with truth everywhere about. And that's the beauty, that's the joy. 
people out of the blue come up and are beautiful people, beautiful, joyous, happy, positive people. Something beautiful happens or something beautiful is said or an engaging conversation suddenly comes out of nowhere. Or we watch someone who starts off perhaps to be not so happy and joyous blossom right in front of our eyes to become happy and joyous. We watch the miracle of truthful resource come about quite unexpectedly or in a so-called impossible way. We watch someone's love walk into their lives. We watch loving union occur amongst neighbours or loving situation or loving resource or loving result come about. But you see, our minds aren't there. We're not trying to get inharmonious corporeality to become harmonious corporeality or argumentative or warring or ill or diseased corporeality to become peaceful, healthy, harmonious corporeality. We are not interested in the pairs of opposites. Our effort is not there because, remember, we realise that both pairs of opposites are nothing to do with God. Whether we're witnessing the poverty or the riches, that experience or both those experiences have nothing to do with God. Whether we're witnessing ill health or health, disease or health, tiredness or vitality, unhappiness or happiness has nothing to do with God whatsoever. They're just opposites of the mind. What we wish to witness as our living experience is the incorporeality of truth, the omnipresence of truth flowing through us so palpably that we can say that is our experience. And it's a far, it's an infinitely greater and more fulfilling experience than anything corporeal. We wish to experience the incorporeal. We wish to experience omnipresence flowing through the very veins of us, being the very bones and the blood of us, being the very being and the body of us. Then it is that we're going to witness that living truth experience as the image and likeness of itself, as our five sensed, three-dimensional, worldly experience. In other words, we're then going to witness the truth. We're going to witness happiness and life and love and harmony and abundance and freedom as our corporeally sensed experience of that which is only incorporeal. But you see, we are the cooker of it. The flame of truth lives our life. We're being that flame we're being that living consciousness. And then it is, and only then it is, that the image and likeness of it, that truth that we are living, that truth that is the flame of truth living us, being us, is witnessed as the image and likeness of itself as our worldly experience. But if we are hoping to have a worldly experience that is more healthy, more abundant, more loving, more peaceful, more harmonious, safer, more secure, more free, without realising that we have to be the living awareness of the truth of good, which is the incorporeal consciousness, not the corporeal consciousness, the immaterial, the unshaped, the unformed, the non-local, all omnipresence, incorporeality, omniscience, omnipotence, eternity, then we are praying amiss, as James has told us. We're hoping amiss. When we are the living flame of truth, we're certainly going to witness it as the image and likeness of itself as our experience. And nothing we could do could possibly hold it back from our experience. Nothing. Nothing. What we are being, we witness. It's as simple as that. What you are being as a living flame of Awareness is what you will witness. And that might be a living flame of materiality. And we've all been there and we've all witnessed it and we've all been able to do nothing about it apart from take some material action which is always temporal and not reliable at all. But now realise that when we are the living flame of truth, there's nothing in the universe that can hold that truth back from being the image and likeness of itself as your worldly experience. And then it is that you can say along with Jesus that I live in this world, but I'm not of it. 
I live and move, I interact, I don't have to hide somewhere in a cave, I can walk right out into this world and I can do my job, I can carry on with my career. If it's the truthful expression that will continue to live as me, if it's not, it'll soon change, but it'll change harmoniously. The transition will be harmonious or pretty harmonious and quick. But I can go and interact, I can go and trade, I can go and be, I can go and have my relationship, my family, my home, I can live in my neighbourhood, and nobody will know anything about what's happening deep within me, except they will witness that wherever I am, there is liberty, there is truth, there is harmony, happiness, love. They'll witness that. Certainly, nothing can hold it back from experience, but they probably will never guess how it's happening. And this is your experience. As you live truth, as you are the living flame of spiritual consciousness, truthful consciousness. All right, now... Have we said enough to close off this part too? I think so, but you'll let me know if there is still confusion. I think we can say that the classes we've been given have most definitely lifted us into the realisation, lifted us out of the misperception of body as consciousness, and now we realize that consciousness is body, therefore infinity is and omnipresence is and eternity is and incorporeality is my actual body. And my body is the totality of it. It's not this local thing, but it is the totality of consciousness, the oneness of consciousness. I think we've really, really heard enough to be clear about this. And then I think we've really heard enough to understand how to dispel the material sense, which is the false sense, and lift into truthful awareness, which then, by the degree that we've lifted into and are a maintained consciousness of truth, so that, or so much so that, the incorporeality of truth is now our living reality, omnipresence is now our living reality, eternity is now our living reality, nothing corporeal but everything incorporeal, and there it is in the incorporeal realm of awareness that we discover omnipresence, we discover infinity, eternity, peace and happiness and love and joy. We discover omniscience and omnipotence there in the incorporeal realm of conscious awareness. That's clear, isn't it? And we know that that very act of or activity of maintained consciousness is the dispelling of the material sense. Therefore, we don't work at dispelling of material sense separately from the very act of knowing truth. That's clear, isn't it? If it is, then we've done our job and we can close off part two and move into part three, which I'm so very excited about. What we're hearing is profound. Can't wait to start. But I want to make sure that when you are listening to this, or if you are still struggling a little with lifting out of the material sense, you know exactly why you are struggling and how to achieve it. And I think we've said enough, and we've heard it clearly enough and thoroughly enough so that either you or anyone listening to this in the future is able to go back over it and actually, the more you listen to it, receive everything you need to receive in order to understand it and get on with doing it. And finally, I hope we've heard enough to believe that God really is God. God really is what you are. God really is the only being and the only presence and the only body and the only world and everything in and of it. So that as we reach now up into truthful God awareness, that we start being able to believe in it, trust in it, lean on it, get on with it. That's the most important thing. Get on with truthful consciousness. That's the only thing you ever have to get on with. It's the only effort you ever have to make, my friends. You never have to make any other effort. You never make an effort to resolve a corporeal problem. You never have to make an effort to resolve or maintain a corporeal good. Don't do that because you'll be let down by yourself. What you make an effort for is lifting and maintaining truthful consciousness. 
And when you've done that, or when you're doing that, be absolutely certain that's the only thing you ever have to do. You never have to solve ill health or disease. You never have to solve injury. You never have to solve some kind of immobility. You never have to solve a lack or a limitation. You never have to solve poverty. You never have to solve unhappiness. You never have to solve love or hate. A lack of love, I should say, or hate or loneliness. You never have to solve insecurity, injustice. Never. Starvation. Never, never. You know, charities are wonderful things, but unfortunately they are operating in the corporeal sense of reality and therefore all they're doing is maintaining it for those who believe that the only thing they can do for starvation or poverty or injustice is to try to better it at its own level. Now, obviously, we do not say this to anyone outside of our group. But we must know that you can't solve poverty by trying to bring riches. You can't solve starvation by trying to bring food. It solves it, maybe, and sometimes, or maybe often, in a temporal way, but it doesn't solve it forever. It doesn't free the person or the groups or the towns, the people, forever. The only way to free the people forever is to realise the truth of people, and that is God individualised, and therefore the way of witnessing the freedom of those people is to get up into the realm of truthful consciousness where the freedom is. It's fully existent right there. And if you can, and I can, and this is our daily work, our hourly work, maintain truthful awareness so that we're not, or so that we're no longer fooled by or dragged back down to a lower degree of belief, which is the material belief or human belief that recognizes hunger or accepts hunger or starvation or poverty or anything else, ill health, disease, injury, a lack of love, hate, war, anything of this nature, and tries to deal with it at its own level, but is able to recognize it as simply a lower degree of awareness, and yet what it actually is witnessing is the fullness of God, although not visible through the material sense, so then lifts up into truthful sense, into the realm of oneness, the realm of God, there is peace, there is abundance, there is plentiful food that never runs out or dry, there is safety, security, home, happiness, love, union, understanding, generosity. Throughout the infinity of being, do you see, there it is, it's fully existent here and now as every being that ever lived never will live, but... We are experiencing that one truthful being at a lower level if we believe or carry on believing the material sense. And if we get dragged into it, then we get caught up in trying to solve it at its own level. And you know the result of that. I'm never saying it's a bad thing at its own level to try and solve these things of life, but it's not the truthful way and it's not the permanent way. The truthful and permanent way is to discover that God is actually everything of experience, everything being witnessed, every being and every body of every being, every experience, every home, family, every neighborhood, every country of being is actually the one place, the holy ground, which is God, and therefore perfect, therefore divine, intelligent, loving, complete. Nothing can ever, ever be lacking from a God-aware being. Who is it? Or where is it that we read that we've never seen a God-aware being begging for bread? Indeed, begging for anything. Begging for life, begging for happiness, begging for love, begging for freedom, begging for truthful fulfillment of being or purpose. Never. A truthful consciousness lives in freedom, lives in infinity, lives in the resources of heaven and the beauty and the effortlessness and the life and the love and the divinity of heaven here on earth. Again, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done indeed in earth, as earth, as it is in heaven. When we, you and I individually, are the heavenly consciousness, the incorporeal consciousness, the omnipresent consciousness, or 
or consciousness of incorporeality, consciousness of infinity, omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience, eternity, incorporeality. There it is. There's how to witness heaven as earth, in earth. There is how to witness thy will, the truthful presence, perfectly evident as and in earth. But we cannot do it if we are trying to bring incorporeality, truth, down to our level of awareness, which is the human or the material level. You know that now. It doesn't need to be said again. All right, well, let's stop there, I hope. And I think that enough has been said for us to close off part two and move on to part three. But again, if you need to go over this before you're able to start living it, then I think you've got all the classes that help you to achieve the knowing of it and the ability to achieve it, the ability to be it. If not, do email me. You're very free to email me, paul at miracleself.com, and let me know if there's anything else that I've missed so far. And then we'll add another class or we'll do a part two to this class 15. That's the best thing. All right, my friends, thank you so very deeply for who you are and your beautiful devoted consciousness. I love you very, very much. And I treasure these classes together, this gathering we have together. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.